Hey, Jamie, how are you doing this morning? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm great. Well, uh, first of all, congratulations on the film. It was it was so awesome. I loved watching it. And let's put it, I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. Downsizing is a movie that heavily relies on its visual effects, no question. Was this a dream job for you? You know, it was a dream job for us. And I, that is one of the things I said to Alexander early on. You know, when I first met him and read the screenplay, I said, you know, this is a dream job for visual effects. And he said, why? You know, it doesn't have a lot of superheroes and... and spaceships and I said exactly you know it's something different and something unique and an opportunity for us to really support the story with visual effects you know a lot of movies you, might, you might say are visual yeah. effects driven but but downsizing really was about about supporting the story absolutely now what was your biggest challenge because you know let's you know I was watching some some stuff online about uh, the very first film that used uh, you know large and small people in it which was in 1935 so I mean let's face it things have come a long way yeah yeah I mean the great thing about digital technology particularly in visual effects is it gives us a lot of freedom and it also gives us the opportunity to do things really high level of quality and that was really important particularly for the way Alexander likes to make movies you know he lingers on shots he doesn't move the camera a lot and the audience really has an opportunity to study the work so we knew that everything was going to have to be really real really realistic you know fundamentally the way that we achieve the shots mixing big people and small people is the way it's always been done we shot the big person first and we took a bunch of measurements and then we scaled the camera and pulled it really far away, went to a green screen stage, shot the small person from a distance so that they were small in frame, put the two images together and you got one big person, one small person. And that technique has been around since 35, Bride of Frankenstein right. even earlier, but we were able to do it with a really high level of quality and a high level of precision because of the control that digital technology gives us. You know. Yeah, and there's some really cool stuff in this too. When, uh, like, for example, like I, you know, kind of like that, you know, the giant. When you have a um, props to work with, like the giant vodka bottle, for example, yeah. or when, like, or when Jason Sudeikis is sitting on a counter yes. and talking to large Matt Damon, is that a, a difficult thing for you to do? Well, that's a very interesting question. You know, we approached the idea of oversized props and sets very specifically. We looked at a lot of the work that had been done in the past, and as good as it was, we just knew that you can't really build something oversized and get that level of detail. All the little scuffs and wrinkles and printing, it's really hard to do. So for instance, in the case of the Cracker Box that Jason Sudeikis' character is sitting on on the counter, we built one, but we ended up replacing it with a real one that we shot with close-up photography. So that was our general philosophy throughout the movie. Everything needed to be real. So whenever we had an oversized prop, we didn't build it, we built what we called a proxy version of it that was kind of lower detail, and then we replaced that with photography of the real object. Uh, one exception to that, uh, I won't give too much away, there are some saltine crackers in yeah. the movie, and uh, those saltine crackers were a real prop that worked out really well. <laughs> um, how involved are you with somebody like director Alexander Payne? I mean, obviously, I, I would think in this this instance because it's so heavily um you know you, it relies so heavily on the small aspect are you working a, very much side by side with him yeah we, and we in visual effects you know we're fortunate we we start very early in the process you know often before the actors are even involved we read the screenplay we figure out how we're going to do it then we're there side by side with the director, the cinematographer, the actors, the other departments while we're filming the movie. And then we move on into post-production. We work with the director and the editors, putting the shots together, cutting them in, seeing how they work, refining them right up until the movie is finished. And so we get to be a part of the process from start to end and side by side with the director. So obviously that collaboration is really key. And we are fortunate to have a really great collaboration with all the departments and particularly with Alexander on this movie. And I think that it all, that kind of communication and collaboration just helps make the, the movie the best it can be. Yeah, you have really worked on some amazing films in terms of what special effects we've seen. Pacific Rim, Robocop, Waterworld, Australia. I mean, and the list goes on and on and on. But how do you, you know, manage to kind of top yourself with each film? 
Well, that's the great thing about this business is every movie is different. You know, I tell people every movie is sort of like a year of school. You learn new things and you make new friends and then you keep that knowledge and you keep those friendships when you move on to the next one. So, you know, it really depends on what the material is and we're always learning something new. We're always looking at solutions in new ways too. The technology evolves. Each filmmaker has a different way. They want to approach a story and approach the visuals. So, you know, it keeps it fresh and keeps it interesting and, and keeps us on our feet. I want to know what the very first reaction was from, you know, from your actors, Matt Damon, when they saw themselves downsized <laughs> for the first time. Well, you know, that's funny. We, you know, <laughs> we finish filming and the actors will sort of all look at me and they say, all right, well, it's up to you now. And, uh, you know, then we put the shots together and then they have an opportunity to view the movie in a, in a partially completed state. And so, you know, that's always really exciting for us to see how our work is perceived through other people's eyes and particularly those who, you know, other people who have worked on it. So we got an opportunity to get some feedback from them, all very positive, and, and we just uh, stayed the course and finished the job. So if you, uh, Jamie, if you have the opportunity to shrink yourself, what would be the, the thing that you would use it for? What would be the first thing you would do if you were a teeny guy? Well, I, I'm very tall. I, I'm, I'm six feet, nine inches tall. And so I always joked that, that <laughs> if, if I was going to downsize, I would pay a little extra to get a little smaller so I could find clothes that fit. But uh, so <laughs> that would probably be my, my first thing. But, uh, you know, I think one of the things that we tried to convey in the movie is just how beautiful the world is when you see it from a different yeah. perspective. And so I think that's the thing I would look forward to the most is sort of getting a fresh look at, at things uh, if I was shrunk down. <laughs> Absolutely. So what, what's next? What's your next project that we're going to see your amazing well, effects? I'm, uh, I'm reading some screenplays right now. I haven't uh, figured out what exactly I'm going to do next, but uh, I'm looking forward to the next one, whatever it is. We are too. You've given us some great stuff and you did such amazing work in downsizing. It really, it made me want, listen, I'm a short person, I'm a small person, but it made me want to, you know, look look at things through blades of grass and stuff. It was kind of very, very cool. Yeah, yeah, it was great, great fun. We really got into it. We got down, laid down on the ground and did what we had to do. But uh, yeah, it was thank you and it was uh, it was a great experience. Great stuff. Well, congratulations. Uh, DVD and uh, Blu-ray is out now, are coming out and uh have a pleasure. What a pleasure to be able to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. Likewise, thank you.